Hello, I'm River and welcome to my Monster Hunter paint series. Today, I'll be doing the Great Jagras armor set. I start off each model by first trimming the mold lines and priming them. In this case, it's matte black. I couldn't quite reach all the spots because of the detail, so I come back and I fill in any gaps with a matching color. Rough iron, I go ahead and I base coat all of the metallic pieces. This includes the different seals from the guild, the bandolier, the lantern, metal plates on the knees and arms. The entirety of the greatsword, and the top of the metal hat. As you can see, I ran into some technical issues this time through, and I couldn't really find much footage that was clear, so... Moon dust. I paint all of the Jagras' scales on the body. This includes the scarf, the hairs, the belt, boots, and the wrap around the greatsword. I also did the trim of the cape. And part of the handle and pommel of the greatsword. Flump pink. I'm just gonna very carefully paint the face and fingers of the hunter. I leave the space around the eye sockets black to add a bit of shadow. Wizard Orb. Go ahead and do all of the under bits, including the shirt, some tassels hanging off the side, and the surface of the cape. I also did some stripes on the boots to add a little more detail. I also go ahead and I give a little bit of detail to the scarf, putting some stripes on it. A bit of an edge highlight and stripes on the hanging fabric. I also use this color on the strands on the sword cover. Fair skin. Just going to go and color all of the Jagras' hairs that hang off the trim of the boots, the back of the hunter, and the shoulder. Skeleton bone. Just going to do the arms of the slinger. As well as the spines on the greatsword. Flesh wash, I go ahead and I cover the entire model with this. From the metallics to the scales and the hair. Even the skin. I come back and I do some light highlighting, returning the mid-tone in certain up-facing details. So the top of the belt, the top of the boot, the front-facing fabric on the scarf and the hat. Very lightly do a edge highlight on the cape trim. And little bits of detail on the scales on the greatsword wrap. Grung green, I real quick paint the lantern that holds the scout flies. He 
You can mix a bit of white or yellow with this and kind of give it a glow effect in the center. Mithril silver. We're just going to highlight the metallic pieces. The containers on the bandolier. The trim of the shoulder piece. The shields and guild sigils on the armor. Knee pads. Metal bands on the arm and the slinger. Slightly edge highlight the greatsword's handles as well as the blade itself. Fairly generous with the uh, fairly generous with the edge of the blade. It takes a few coats to cover the brownish metallic we used. It ends up looking pretty good. Some dry rust. Just gonna water that down plenty and just sort of do the bottom bits of the Jagra's hair. When you're done with that, we're going to very carefully use just a wet brush and sort of agitate the edges where the fair skin meets the rust color and break it up a little so that it becomes a little more of a blend. Were it the larger model, I would have just taken the time to blend it properly, but we're dealing with a lot of detail in a small amount of space here, so do as you wish, but just be careful. Turn that same skin tone and just give the top facing pieces of the face, like the nose and the cheek, just a little bit more of that highlight. If you want, you can come back with the grown green and just sort of very lightly dry brush the area around the lantern to give it a bit of a glow effect. Nothing major, but I, I like how it looks. Wizard Orb, I just come back with that teal color and just sort of highlight the raised bits of the cape. As well as the other details, such as the stripes and the torso. Turn with matte black and just sort of clean up your base. I want to try to mostly use the same direction with your strokes and just sort of come back with multiple layers. You want it to be nice and smooth and evenly colored. I felt like the armor looked a little bright so I come with some strong tone and just barely moistening my brush, I go ahead and I darken everything back down a bit. I don't let anything pull anywhere too much, but I cover all of the scales and cloth. With that, I consider the model done. I ran into some technical difficulties with getting my footage to come out clear. Um, I'm gonna try to fix that for next time, but I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Next up will be the Anginath armor, with the dual blades.